Oh, fuck yeah. 1-800-449-8255. And welcome to Sunday, February 25. Um, right here on the Clark the Shark pornography. It's not simple talk radio, you guys. It isn't. Other YouTubers do, uh, or they try to do, you know, something funny, cute, irreverent, but they end up just fucking irrelevant because they're trying to go up against yours truly, your humble DJ, MC, servant, whatever I am right here on the Clark the Shark Show from the fabulous golden EIB pornography, you guys. It's mental nudity. You've heard uh, Michael Weiner talk about psychological nudity. Well, Clark the Shark, my show here is psychological pornography, baby. It's the most fucked up show on the airwaves worldwide, everywhere, because it's coming to you from me, Clark the Shark, the world's most watched band, The Greenhouse Effect, GE, and me, Clark the Shark, the author of She's a Bitch, and Then You Live, uh, the title co-written by this bass player guy in the South Bay, I will admit it, you guys, I'm not going to give him royalties, though. He won't even email me, and, and none of them will in the South Bay, you guys. Sometimes they do, and they're like, Sharky, I wrote that. And I'm like, dude, you wrote what? And he's all, I wrote that one part of that one song that gets all the web traffic. I wrote that. I wrote that one night at the Hermosa Saloon, Sharky, and you were drunk. You, like, were there. You just don't remember. And I'm like, dude, me, Clark the Shark, I'm all original, baby. I come up with my own licks, my own riffs, my own tangents. When I rock a song, well, maybe Ted Nugent or Pete Townsend helps a little or like the monkeys or some shit. At 1-800-449-8255 here on the number one syndicated radio talk show host show. Right here on WABC Radio, you guys. Forget Howard Douchebag on Sirius. Fuck that guy. Nobody even, I don't even know who listens to that shit. You got to go to the host with the most, like a bleeding host. Shark a doodle doo, the shark a lamb a ding dong. When they crack me open, I'm bleeding, baby, because it's real, like the Lord. Bleeding host. Have you seen that, you guys? A Catholic miracles where. They're like, look, the host is bleeding. Right here on the Clark the Shark Show, the host. shark a doodle do me, the one and only. You guys, I will bleed and I will give my life for all of you. Right here on the Sharky Cross, I will die and go to hell for three days before I will sell you an annuity or let you listen to any other talk radio show on YouTube, Sirius, Spreaker, whatever, Spriker, wherever, you guys. It don't matter. You're going to listen to shark a lamb -a ding dong baby. And when I'm talking about good morning, Sharky, the earth says hello. I'm talking about strawberry alarm clock. Uh, I guess this is like their third or fourth album or something. Uh, they completely change here, you guys. And just by accident, uh, they didn't even try to do this. This was just, you know, in life, how you have a happy, you're walking down a sidewalk and like you accidentally look in a window and like you're just on a sidewalk walking along and you see a naked lady and you're like, whoa, I'm sorry, ma'am. Whoops. Like, look the other way. Like you just look, like you accidentally look in any window. Yeah. What does Sharky see? I see the lady in her gown. I didn't mean to see. Not me, Sharky. I'm just a talk radio host right here on the Sharkalama Ding Dong Show. I wasn't looking at you, little lady. 
But sometimes, like, I accidentally looked at my future wife, like, in a bar, in a club, in a nightclub. I looked over at her, and I was all like, sorry, I, I had to look. You look good. Like, you know, you guys, you're in a bar, you're in a club, it's dimly lit. And you just see a girl and you're like, whoops, sorry, I was looking at those. I'm sorry, let me move upward. I was looking at your eyes. I'm just kidding. Right here on the Clark the Shark show where it's pornography. Talk radio style, baby. Mental, psychological, psychology from the PhD, Sharky, me. Where I'm talking about good morning, Sharky. The earth says hello, strawberry alarm clock you guys um what a fucking album this is and it is largely forgotten in history you guys don't ask me how or why this incredible album is like dude it's not even fair like what happened okay you know me clark the shark i loved the original strawberry alarm clock uh, they accidentally cut the famous hit, Incense and Peppermints, with some singer that sang once and never sang again or something like that. Some 15 or 16-year-old kid was hanging out with the band, and he sang that one song. They should have just fucking hired the guy on the spot, you guys. But uh, instead, they didn't. And they have all these other songs that sound a little like... I don't know, like the association. They're like easy listening, mellow rock or something for two albums. Uh, maybe three. I'm not sure, you guys. I've, I reviewed them all already. But uh, that mellow rock and early shit, I like it because it's so melodic and uh, it's so fucking weird and different. But as time was moving on in the late 60s, this band had to get with it. You know, because like Steppenwolf and Led Zeppelin and, you know, everyone's getting heavier and rocking harder. And, uh, you know, Strawberry Alarm Clock are like, we better jump on that bandwagon. And, uh, man, did they fucking ever hear you guys. Good morning, Starshine. Uh, this album kicks ass from the first track to the end. Every single song is so good. This album is so great that I don't know how it got buried by the likes of everybody. You know, it just, it ain't right. Uh, now, there's no real hit songs that should be or could be lit up in blue at Wikipedia. And me, Clark the Shark, uh, I saw this album somewhere, like at the Rhodium, but I didn't buy it. This is not in my big vinyl collection up in the South Bay. It never was. I never bought Good Morning Starshine. Uh, don't fucking ask me how or why, you guys, but I have heard it in the South Bay, you know, people sitting around smoking weed, drinking beers in a room. And I was like, somebody played this. I think it was some guy in Torrance uh, named Mike. I won't give his last name, but I was, you know, we were doing bong hits. Uh, you remember that, you know, and drinking a few beers and listening to this. And I was like, what the fuck? This is really good. And he's all, yeah. And I'm like, how isn't this like as big as Zeppelin or the Stones or like the Who or something? And he's like, I don't know, bro. Here, have another toke. Come on, Shargy have a Coors Light and a bong hit and a, we're gonna bust out a joint <laughs> and listen to some strawberry alarm clock good morning starshine you know dude remember just those forgotten afternoons after you were at South High or you know me I was at South and for like one or two months I was at Redondo I got kicked out of South and then I got kicked out of both. I, I'm not sure if I ever graduated from either, you guys. I remember going to a thing with South High, but they didn't give me a diploma. They just gave me a, a white piece of paper that was uh, blank. And they're like, you got to go to summer classes, Sharky. Oh, remember that lady? There was a lady that would feel up everyone for drugs at the graduation thing because everyone was going to go get fucked up that night. 
uh, this old perverted lady would feel up everyone like she's a cop, like she's with the FBI or the Torrance police. And I remember she like felt me up as I was getting a blank white piece of paper in 1983 at South High where they're like, Sharky, you didn't graduate. And I'm like, what? They're like, you got to take the summer courses or, you know, maybe come back and take courses at El Camino next year where you can get your credit. I don't know if I ever did, you guys. I think I did. I remember them mailing me a high school diploma at 251 Paseo de Gracia years later, like 1987, like four years after I left South High in Torrance, you guys. And I was all, what did I do to deserve this uh, high school diploma that I got? And no one ever told me. I think they just gave it to me. They're like, you know what? Just give Sharky fucking guys pathetic. You know, no one cares about him here. Here's your fucking... You know, it's like when they give me the golden EIB sharker phone, you know, how Hush Bimbo comes over to my house or Don Henley or Glenn Fry or Hannity or, or Howard Douchebag or Kevin and Bean or Kevin and Stryker, or Mario Lopez. They're like, you're number one, Sharky, here. Take your fucking goddamn worthless, pathetic trophy. It's yours. Well, that's how they were with my high school diploma at South High in Torrance, 1983. But it wasn't 1983. It was 1987 or 88. And I remember, remember like people were getting married and shit. And I was just getting a diploma. Other people were getting married, buying houses, having kids in 88. And I was just like learning to drive a car and get a high school diploma. And I was drumming in the greenhouse effect with Phil Keegan and Rick Carmody, you know, playing, you know, other fucking people are going to college and I'm, I'm like, I'm going to be the biggest three piece band ever. I'm going to mail all my tapes and songs to the record labels and I'm going to invent something that's never been done before. A three piece grunge band that's playing punk, indie, psychedelic, metal, garage. It's never been done. I invented it. Me, Clark the Shark. Just like they say now in the South Bay and they're all like, Sharky did it all. He invented it. And we were wrong. We were wrong. We had Sharky pegged all wrong. The fucking guy's a goddamn genius. Here, Sharky, we love you. We changed our tune. We love you now. And I'm like, you know what? You guys were right. You should have hated me because it's all been done before. And I didn't fucking even invent shit. Me, Clark the Shark, because Good Morning Starshine and, uh, you know, Strawberry Alarm Clock, this album right here and the James Gang and Iggy Pop and the Minutemen and Black Flag and fucking you name it, the Who Live at Leeds, baby, uh, the MC5, the, the Music Machine, the, the Haunted, the Count Five, baby, they all did it long before me, Clark the Shark. You can even throw in Blue Cheer and Eric Douchebag and Cream. Fucking A, baby. Everyone did it before Clark the Shark. I was just copying it, putting a new label on it, you know, polishing it up and you know, I went to art class over there at Scrock in Torrance. There was some guy named like Mr. Wilson, and he's like, Sharky, you will accomplish something in 2024, like 40 fucking years from now. That's longevity, baby. He wrote something like that in my yearbook. Like, it's going to take you a while, Sharky, but one day you will get somewhere and you will review Good Morning Starshine by Strawberry Alarm Clock. This fucking album's incredible, you guys. I don't know where you are, Mr. Wilson. He would dress up like Thomas Edison, you guys, and Torrance, this guy. I'm not kidding. Me, Clark the Shark. And, uh, you know, we didn't even call him Mr. Wilson. We called him Don in the art class over there at Scrock. But I bet even Don didn't know about Strawberry Alarm Clock. This fucking album, you guys. Oh, dude, I got to tell you a story. There was a guy named Randy Rhodes in my class in 1983, 84, whatever year it was at Scrock in Torrance. There was a kid named Randy Rhodes. I'm not kidding. That was his name. And he was a cool, mellow guy. But one day he just snapped and flipped out. And I think he came to... Uh, he came to Scrock one day high on some drug like maybe mus mushrooms, mescaline and speed or 
I don't know, you guys, something, heroin, fuck, dude, he was all fucked up and he just wigged out. I never forgot it right here on the Clark the Shark show. And like later on, they're like, dude, I think he passed away. And I'm like, dude, don't even joke about that shit. And they're like, I think he did, Sharky. We're not sure. I've even heard that shit about me when I go up to the South Bay. Someone's like, you know that guy in the greenhouse effect? That Clark the Shark, a 1-800-449-8255. I heard he passed away and he died. And I'm like, really? Sharky? You mean me? And they're like, no, no, not you. You're just some ordinary man like Rick Emmett at Triumph would write about. Not you. We're talking about shark a lama ding dong the shark a doodle do 1-800-449-8255 from the Clark the Shark Show. We hear he died. He got all high on speed and heroin and and fucking smoked too many bong hits or some shit while he was listening to Good Morning Starshine by Strawberry Alarm Clock. And I'm like, no, I'm right here, you guys. I'm perfectly alive and well. And I'm doing talk radio now down here in like Tijuana, living homeless. I'll admit it, you guys, living in a tent. Because now, you know, California has been like invaded and the rent here is 4000 a month. And like the Republican rich people that live in uh, San Rancho Santa Fe and Palos Verdes, they're like, we're going to raise the rent, Sharky, and we're going to house eight people from like Costa Rica, Honduras and El Salvador. And you, Sharky, you're just a loser. We let the free market decide and you can just live in a tent. And I'm like, fine, I'll move to Venice Beach and I'll live in a tent and I'll do the Clark the Shark show from that tent right here at 1-800-449-8255 where I will review Good Morning Starshine by Strawberry Alarm Clock. That's right, me, the shark a doodle do, the shark a lamb a ding dong from the golden EIB Sharker phone. I don't give a fuck. I'll live in a fucking tent and I'll review this fucking album right here, this psychedelic garage atmosphere laden incredible album you guys this isn't clark the shark's underground garage baby no way there's no little sharky here today this is an overground polished masterpiece here i would say this is one of the greatest albums ever 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 recorded you guys i'm not kidding you guys think i'm kidding i'm fucking around i'm not listen to this fucking album it is nothing like the two or three I'm not sure, dude. Uh, Strawberry Alarm Clock albums before it. This is totally different. And you know me, Clark the Shark. I don't like lineup changes when bands move around, you know, puzzle pieces. I don't like that, you guys. I like bands to keep the same people. Uh, For 25 years, you know, they're a united thing. You know, it's us against the world. You keep as many of the guys from the first album as you can. That's me, Clark the Shark. I like that shit. But in this case, dude, they added a new singer. They got four of the guys from those other albums. And it's fucking killer, you guys. I gotta admit it. I love this shit. Um, and I think the guy's name was Mike Batty. I'm not sure. Um, dude. And I know, dude, I know Jim Aviani doesn't got this album. Now... Jim Aviani's a fucking goddamn genius. He knows everything about David Bowie, Lou Reed, Iggy Pop, you know, the MC5. Uh, He probably thinks now he knows 1966 better than me. Yours truly, Clark the Shark. But I guarantee you, I knew about this album long ago, and I'll bet you he didn't. He might have. The fucking guy is always trying to one-up me, you know, or outdo me. Remember fucking Polly on The Sopranos? The the one kid is like, she, does, she got hit with a silicone and everywhere. He's like, why are you trying to outdo me? You took the fucking air right out of my shark line. You know, I don't like that, you guys. When somebody takes the air out of my punch line right here on the Clark the Shark show, me, I'm the same way. I'm like... You know, I don't care if the silicone went everywhere. You listen to Clark the Shark, 1-800-449-8255 from the Clark the Shark Show, because I'm talking only me about Strawberry Alarm Clock, Good Morning Starshine. This fucking incredible album, you guys, this thing is amazing. Uh, Of the late 60s albums, this is one of the best, you guys, recorded. 
every single song on this is fucking amazing. And it even carves out like an experimental sound that's a little bit like Steppenwolf, I'll admit. It's a little bit, you know, kind of typical hard rock at the time, you know, maybe some Janis Joplin type of shit. But no, I get like a canned heat or even like a, I'm not kidding you guys, like a fucking Captain Beefheart vibe from this album. I'm not a dude. You guys think I'm full of shit. I'm not. Listen to this fucking album. This thing is awesome. I love this fucking album, you guys. I listen to this thing over and over because it is really good shit. And uh, I don't care what the stars say, you you guys. I, I don't even know if this gets stars or if it gets reviews. I hope it doesn't, you guys. <laughs> I hope not. Side one, Me and the Township. Of course, you guys all know that song. Jimmy Pittman, awesome. <laughs> Side one of this is going to confuse you guys as it blows your mind. Uh, Off-ramp, road tramp. <laughs> no cop dude I'm gonna keep it clean you guys here and I admit it's psychological rock and roll pornography nudity whatever you want to call it but off ramp road tramp that's for like the homeless if you're looking to get laid you need like a off ramp road tramp that fucking song's amazing you guys the first two songs on this crank this album up loud and you're gonna know what I'm talking about uh, bluesy rock and roll, kick ass blues rock, uh, right there with Janis Joplin or Steppenwolf or Zeppelin, you guys. I'm not kidding. Small package, uh, you guys, that's not about me, Clark the Shark. Come on. Number three, side one. I'm married to a black lady here, you guys. So don't, you know, you guys out there like, haha, sharky, small package. No, I take L arginine. You guys, I'm going to give you a little tip. If you guys are struggling with, you know, I'm not going to say the two letters like ED. Take L arginine, you guys. Don't take Viagra, and that shit's bad for you. It'll give you a fucking heart attack. Take uh, one or two whole L arginine. A day you guys find that shit uh take one at nine in the morning and then take another l arginine at like 1 p.m and you will be good to go at night you guys with your significant other you won't have a small package track number three that's a fucking awesome song uh bluesy 358 the first three songs on this dude you guys are going to be shocked like holy shit this album's good and Hog Child uh, is killer, you guys. Uh, this is, um, I would say it's every bit as good as Steppenwolf, but this isn't like Steppenwolf. It's more like Captain Beefheart. It is, you guys. And, and yet it's nothing like that. Miss Attraction. <laughs> every single song on side one, if you crank this album up loud and you're smoking a joint, or drinking a beer. I don't do drugs or alcohol, but if you do, I recommend this album, you guys. Crank this very fucking loud uh, and and use drugs. I'm not telling you to use drugs, but if you do already use drugs, use your drugs and crank this album loud. I just fucking listen to the side one, dude. Miss Attraction. Awesome. This kicks ass. Me, Clark the Shark, I am BDS, but dry sober. It doesn't sound like it, but I am, you guys. I don't believe in drugs. I go to the Frank Zappa school. You know, keep it sober. Keep it clean, you guys. Um, <laughs> keep, it, keep it good, except when you listen to this album. That might be the exception to the rule. Of course, Good Morning Starshine. Uh, you know, dude, with these songwriter guys, very awesome. I'm just going to let you listen to it. Miss Attraction 2. I call it Miss Attraction 2, but it's like Miss Attraction. It's like a little rock opera. It comes back, you know. <laughs> Jimmy Pittman wrote Rot Your Name in Gold, which is awesome, you guys. Side 2 is even better. You put me on. Stand by. <laughs> This album does not put you on, dude. You're going to be blown away by this fucking album. And Dear Joy. It's not like Joy, you know, Harry Nilsson, that country song, you guys, Jimmy Pittman. 
Um, you got to just fucking hear it. I love side two of this, but I love side one so much. I'm, you know, you got to probably play this loud and be drunk, not drunk, but just have like two beers and listen to this fucking album loud. It is built for people who are high. I'm not kidding you guys. It's not really good music sober, even though I Clark the shark am sober. I can listen to this sober. I don't think any of you can. Maybe you can. I don't know. I could be right or wrong there, but changes. The final track on this is probably the best song on the whole album. 515, awesome, you guys. It's not like Bowie changes. Certainly not, but it's fucking incredible. <laughs> it needs bonus tracks, you know, mystery tracks added later. 1997 Japanese reissue, you guys. Um, it needs them. Now, keep in mind, it's nothing like... Uh, strawberry alarm clock that you know incense and peppermints is nothing like those albums and then those albums are just this mellow journey through mellow it ain't that you guys it kind of brushes against that at times but not so much it gets rocking hard here and it kicks ass and it's almost technical prog rock or something it's bluesy it's experimental, too, you guys. Let's be perfectly honest here. Jimmy Pittman, the lead vocal, lead guitar guy, added to the band. Makes a big difference here, you guys. And you know me, Clark the Shark. I don't like lineup changes. Of course, Mark White's keyboards, Gene Gunnell, the drummer. Uh, Ed King, who later was in Skinnerd. We all know about him and Lee Freeman. But uh, this is like a Jimmy Pittman solo album or something, you guys. It is so weird. And yet it is not. Not at all, you guys. This album is fucking uh, one of the greatest albums ever recorded in history, just flat out. And when you hear this on two beers, you're going to agree. And you're going to email me at C-L-A-H-A-G-I-N at AOL.com. And you're going to be like, Clark the Shark, you're fucking right. That album's incredible. And I'm going to be like, it is, you guys. It's so weird. It's so intricate and uh, very bluesy, very hard, kick-ass rock and roll. Uh, you might call it psychedelic. I don't, you guys. This is just uh, direct, in-your-face rock. But then it's got these little ideas mixed into it along the way that just blow your mind where you're like, this is fucking genius. And I want you young people today in 2024 who are only 18 and you were born in like 2006, five years after 9-11 when Mohammed Atta and those terrorists from Al Qaeda, they flew those jets into our Twin Towers in New York. Me, Clark the Shark, right here on WABC Radio New York, I want you to buy this album. And you tell them that Clark the Shark, the fabulous Clark the Shark, told you to buy it. Number one on, you know, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, all the planets of the solar system, Neptune, Pluto, of course, Earth, but certainly, you guys, on Uranus, Clark the Shark. I told you to buy this fucking album because it's incredible. Uh, Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, or streaming, anywhere you can go online, get Good Morning Starshine by the Strawberry Alarm Clock, even though it sounds nothing like the Strawberry Alarm Clock that we know. And even though I, Clark the Shark, don't like lineup changes, I don't like adding people, but in this case, it had to be done at the time, in the moment. Uh, it was meant to be, you guys, for one of the greatest albums ever recorded. A largely forgotten album, but then again, no. A lot of fucking people know this album, you guys. You talk to any biker up in uh, Big Sur, uh, you know, up in California, and he's going to go, dude, that fucking album is awesome. And we stand by that album. And Clark the Shark is absolutely fucking right. That album's incredible. Buy this album, you guys, right here on the Clark the Shark show. This isn't Little Sharky's Underground Garage. This ain't little Steve and Silvio. No, you guys. This is a polished, bluesy, kick-ass, hard-rocking, experimental rock album that almost puts Captain Beefheart to shame or something, you guys. And almost puts, like, the MC5 to shame. I'm not kidding. 
uh, I don't mean like it kicks ass more, but like it's experimentalism and it's trying to be weird and different ism is just so fucking weird, you guys. And that being said, this album tries to fit in with like the biker, you know, kick ass rocker scene in the moment of the late 60s too. also, you guys right here on the Clark the Shark show. But then again, no, it doesn't. It's unique and different, and it has a sound all its own. Good morning, Starshine, Strawberry Alarm Clock. Get this fucking album. It is essential if you want kick-ass bluesy rock from the late 60s. Uh, that's right there with Blue Cheer, Janis Joplin, Steppenwolf, Zeppelin, The Who, anything, you guys. This is fucking kick-ass rock and roll. I truly believe this is one of the greatest albums I've ever heard, ever recorded. And I'm not kidding around. Get this fucking shit right here on the Clark the Shark Show. And you tell them where you heard it, baby, from the golden EIB Sharkerphone. It's not a microphone. It's the Wolfman Jack on crack, baby. shark a lama ding dong the shark a doodle doo That's right. That's me. Faster than Eminem. Faster than Hannity. Faster than Gutfeld, Howard Douchebag, Hush Bimbo, with both sides of his brain tied behind his back, Mark Levin. He's like, Sharky, you don't know. You don't know anything, Sharky. You, you don't have the life experience. You haven't been there. You haven't done anything. Get off my show, you big dope. You don't know. And I'm like, Mark Levin, I do know right here on the shark a ding dong show, the great one, Mark Levin, even he bows down, baby, along with that other great one, Wayne Gretzky, all of them. They're like, we're fucking in awe of Clark the Shark, but not Mario Lopez and not Dr. Demento. Those two guys are like, no, we're ahead of Sharky, the shark a ding dong, the shark a doodle doo. Fuck that guy. We're number one. I'll admit it, you guys. I'm number three. I can't catch up with Dr. Demento or Mario Lopez from like TMZ or like fucking uh, Entertainment Tonight or some shit. I don't care, you guys, if those guys are number one and two, respectively. Me, Clark the Shark, I take up the third spot on the list of all-time greats from the Sharkerphone, not a microphone. Those other guys are on microphones. I'm on a Sharkerphone because I'm talking about Good Morning Starshine from Strawberry Alarm Clock, you guys, and fucking buy this album because it's incredible. Blues rock, dude, but done right, done exact. Uh, probably better than anybody right here. Make sure you get this today. And I'm out of here. Peace.